Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, remember, this ministry is based off of the King James Bible, God's perfect written word for English-speaking people, and it has a foundation that, remember, part of this ministry is words have meaning. Okay. So, the title of this one I titled, He Saw, Not Esau. Now, Esau has nothing to do with this study, So, but the reason I said that is because it's a beautiful day today. Is because when I say he saw really fast, it almost sounds like I'm saying Esau. I'm saying he, a person, saw, saw something with their eyes. He saw. Okay. So if you want to turn to Matthew chapter 3, verse 16. Okay. I've been doing some expository studies on first and second Peter, and somehow the way God works, he brought me over to these verses and correlating with things that are going on over there in first and second Peter. And God showed me something very interesting. So we're going to start with Matthew chapter 3, verse 16. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. Notice it says, he saw. And I'll say it again. He saw, not Esau. In other words, you're not to add to God's word. You don't change God's word. But he saw. I'm going to stop right there. For some reason, part of your lost life, if you were a professing Christian like I was for so many years, and you're lost and then you get saved, and some people out there tend to still teach using vocabulary from their lost life or from false teachings. They know the truth now. They teach the truth. But some brothers in Christ still hold on to phrases and sayings that aren't really found in the Bible. And for me, I always had it in my head that everybody there, when Jesus was being baptized, that the Holy Spirit coming down like as a dove, everybody saw that. Okay. That was just, for some reason, I, the way people taught it, it was like everybody saw that. But we read, Matthew's doing a telling of it, and it says, He saw. Matthew didn't say they saw it. He didn't say we saw it. He said He saw, singular. One person saw it. Lots of people there, but only one person saw it. Well, let's try to find out who this one person is. Okay. Turn to Mark chapter 1, verse 10. Let's see if Mark will tell us who saw it. Okay. And you know how sometimes it'll say he saw because if one person saw it. Let's see if maybe more than one person saw it. Let's go to Mark chapter 1, verse 10. And straightway coming up out of the water, he saw the heaven open and the spirit like a dove descended upon him. Here's Mark doing his telling. Excuse me. And we see the word he saw again, singular, one person. What we're talking about here is Jesus being baptized. The Holy Spirit comes down like as a dove. Remember in Matthew 3.16 it said like a dove. We just read there it says like a dove descending upon him. It's like a dove. It's not an actual physical dove. We've been talking about this, brothers and sisters in Christ, in my videos and other brothers in Christ videos when it comes to standing for the Godhead versus the Trinity. Jesus is the only body. The physical manifestation of God is Jesus Christ. Okay? That the Holy Spirit doesn't have a body and God the Father doesn't have a body. God the Father is the soul. The Holy Ghost is the Spirit. Is the Spirit. Holy Spirit. Okay? But when we get to this, it's like, wait a minute. It's starting to dawn on me. And some of the brothers out there that I talk to, they're like, well, yeah, only John saw it. To me, you might already know this, but some of you be like, wait a minute. I always just, maybe it's because of the people's teachings or whatnot, always assumed that everybody there saw it. But we've read from Matthew and Mark's, Mark's saying he saw. Mark's not saying they saw it or we saw it or the people of Israel saw it. He said he saw singular one person. Let's jump over to Luke. Let's see if Luke will tell us who it is that saw this. So Luke chapter 3, verse 22. And the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him, and a voice came from heaven and said, which said, Thou art my beloved Son, and thee I am well pleased. Well, there we go. We got Luke. He just says it happened. That means everybody saw it, right? We're going to come back to Luke. So Luke just says in that verse, this is what happened. It doesn't even say he saw, they saw, this person saw. He's just stating this is what happened. Mm -hmm. We'll come back to that. 
Let's go to John, the book of John, chapter 1, verse 32. Let's see what John has to say. This is John, the disciple whom Jesus loved. And John, he's talking about John the Baptist, bear record saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it aboded upon him. Well, out of all four tellings of it, because in all four Gospels, John actually lets us know who the he saw is in Matthew and Mark. It's John the Baptist. Okay. John bare record saying, I saw, verse 33, and I knew him not, but he that sent me to be baptized with water, we're going to read about why it was so important that John is the one that saw it. The same said unto me, upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptized with the Holy Ghost. See, it was a sign, not for the Jewish people as a whole, it was a sign for John the Baptist. Okay? And I saw, referring to John the Baptist again, and bear record that this is the Son of God. Again, the next day after John stood and the two of his disciples, and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he saith, Behold the Lamb of God. And there's an exclamation point. Okay? He's excited. He saw the Holy Ghost descending like as a dove, but the Holy Ghost descending on him and remaining on him, and this is the Son of God. And he's excited. Notice at the end of verse 36, there's an exclamation point. Behold the Lamb of God! He's yelling it for his two disciples. Verse 37, and the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. That's the key right here, okay, for why I believe John, God told John this is a sign for you. I'm going to give you this vision. It's a sign for you to show that it's the Son of God. So, but before we get into that part about the two disciples, we're going to talk about them following Jesus. Let's get back to Luke. You say, well, Luke didn't say it was John. It, other people could have seen it. Well, it's called context. Let's go back to Luke chapter 3, but we're going to go back to verse 16. Remember what we read in John 1, 32. Why was it a sign given to John the Baptist? Okay. That we even read there that it's a sign given to him. The same as which baptized with the Holy Ghost. Okay. John, uh, Luke 3, verse 16. John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, with the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. See, John was told that someone's going to come and baptize with the Holy Ghost and with fire. But then he's told, here's a sign. When you see the Holy Ghost descend upon him and remain upon him, that's the man who's going to baptize with the Holy Ghost. It's the Son of God. It's the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Okay. Remember, John's talking here. Let's keep going. Whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and will gather his wheat into his garner, but the chaff he will burn with fire and crucible. And many other things in his exhortation preach he unto the people. Okay. And now it takes a brief pause. This is John talking, but then it tells us what happened to John afterwards. But Herod the Tetrarch, being reproved by, his, reproved by him for Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, and for all the evil which Herod had done, added yet this above all, that he shut up John in prison. And when all the people were baptized, it came to pass... Now all the people were baptized. It's talking about before John got shut up. Now when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying, the heaven was opened and the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved Son, and thee, and thee of, I am well pleased. And thee I am well pleased. So how do we know this statement's coming from John? Well, we read, comparing Scripture with Scripture, John chapter 1, John the Baptist is saying, I saw it and I'm bearing record. Up here, it starts out verse 16, John's talking. Then it says what happens to John, and then it goes back to John's account of what happened when Jesus was baptized. John the Baptist was the one that saw the Holy Ghost descend like a dove. It doesn't say everybody else saw it. And people say, well, it didn't. 
Well, it does because it says he saw. He, they single out one person saying that person saw it. It did not anywhere does it say we saw it. Everybody around us saw it. All the Jews that are here saw it. Matthew's not saying I saw it. Mark's not saying I saw it. Even Luke isn't saying I saw it. He states it like it's happening because John's speaking, and we find out in the book of John, he's bearing record. I saw it, talking about John the Baptist, and he's bearing record. Okay? One person saw it. After doing this study, I, like, I talked to some brothers. They're like, yeah, I did this study. God showed this to me back then. Well, God showed this to me when I was doing this study, and it took a while to get this out. But, yeah, one person saw it. Not everybody saw it. It wasn't a sign, because I've always said this. Well, it's a sign for the Jewish people. After doing this study, it was a sign for John the Baptist, not the Jewish people as a whole. John the Baptist is a Jew, but it was for him, not the Jewish people as a whole. He's the only one that saw it. Okay. Now, why is this important? Well, words have meaning. We've got to be careful with what we teach. But what was the outcome that John being the one that saw it? Nobody else saw it. John was the one that saw it. Okay. Uh, let's go back to John. And uh, I'm going to read, we'll go ahead and start in verse 35. We'll go back to 35. Again, the next day after John stood and the two of his disciples, and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he saith, Behold the Lamb of God. There was the explanation point. He's screaming it. He's excited. Look, people, behold the Lamb of God. If everybody saw what happened, why isn't everybody going, it's the Lamb of God. It's the Lamb of God. Why is only John doing it? Let that sink in. Okay. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. That's where we left off. Let's continue. John chapter 1, verse 38. Then Jesus turned and saw them following and said unto them, What seek ye? They said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted master, where dwellest thou? And he saith unto them, Come and see. And they came and saw where he dwelt and abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him, heard John speak and follow him, was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first findeth his own brother Simon and saith unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus, and when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah, thou shalt be called Cephas, which is to be interpreted a stone. Now, what's going on here? John the Baptist, God gave him a sign to say, this is the Son of God. This is the man that's going to baptize with the Holy Ghost. This is the Lamb of God that take away the sins of the world. Right? And because God did that, what does John do? The two disciples are there and he's like, this is the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. And what's one of those disciples? And when you read the Bible, Jesus had tons of disciples. Not like millions, but he had a lot of disciples. But there's a passage, you have to do the study, where all the disciples leave him except for 12. And those 12 became, 12, 3. 12, if I can do a one over here, 12. <laughs> I don't have 12 fingers. Those 12 disciples became the 12 apostles. And one of the disciples that used to be John's that left him to follow Jesus was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. Why is this important? It all connects together. Okay. God knows what he's doing and he has a plan. Now, if you turn to Matthew chapter 10, 1, what's with this Andrew, Simon Peter's brother? What's the big deal? And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, this is after all the other disciples left him, his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to, call, to cast them out, to heal all manners of sickness and all manners of disease. Now the names of the twelve apostles are these, the first Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, James the son of Zebedee, and John, John his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the publican, James the son of Alphaeus and Lebaeus, whose surname was Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. What's important here? Andrew if you look at it, if God never gave, and God, I'm just saying God could have done things any way he want, but I'm just backtracking, okay? If God didn't give John a sign, John didn't stand there going, this is, this is the Lamb of God telling his disciples and everybody that's around, 
this is the Lamb of God, Andrew wouldn't have heard it. Andrew wouldn't have been like, well, this is the guy that John kept talking about and preaching about. Well, I'm going to follow him. And he goes and follows him. He never would have done that if John wasn't there and God didn't give John that sign. You know what I'm saying? Everything fits together. There's a reason for everything. But the important of this is, remember, words have meaning. He saw, not Esau. Okay. Grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching.